Um, OK, so welcome everybody to our COVID-19 Q&A event. This is our second event. My name is Tanya Wall. I'm the executive director at the Stevenson Memorial Hospital Foundation, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. I just want to thank everybody for sending in their questions, both for our last event and for this uh, event today. We really appreciate that, and we hope we can share some information out to the community once more. Um, we have two panelists joining us today, and uh, so we're very pleased to have Jody Levac back with us again, and as well, uh, Stevenson's Chief of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Dr. Shears. So thank you uh, both for being here very much. Um, up first, very pleased, like I said, to welcome Jody back. Jody's been the president and CEO of Stevenson Memorial Hospital since January 2014. He's recognized for his energetic and transformational leadership style, overseeing the strategic and operational planning of the hospital. Jody previously worked at South Lake Regional Health Center, holding numerous leadership positions in mental health and winning the award of leadership excellence in 2010. Jody has worked uh, across both private and public sectors starting his career in Northern Ontario hospitals and was the recipient of the Northern Bursary and in 2013 completed a doctoral degree in health administration. Jody has led Stevenson Memorial Hospital through the redevelopment stages and under his tenure, the hospital has achieved accreditation with exemplary standing. And he continues to lead Stevenson through the COVID-19 pandemic. And we're so grateful, Jody, that you're able to take some time to join us today. Um, before we get into the questions that we received, would you like to take a few moments, Jody, just to say a few opening remarks? Oh, so thank you, Tanya, for those uh, kind words. And I'm always so humbled and privileged to be the CEO here in such a great community that uh, has shown so much care and support over the last few months. It's certainly in unprecedented times in healthcare, and uh, our community is has been just so outstanding at uh, helping our frontline workers, showing support, whether it's been parades of businesses coming through to giving discounts. And we continue to get great discounts from local businesses and restaurants for our frontline staff. It inspires us to make sure we're here for you guys when, when you need our help. So thanks, thanks for allowing me to come today and um, look forward to answering questions. Great, thank you. So we're going to jump right into the questions and we're going to ask uh, uh, Jody, we're going to ask you a few questions first and then we'll shift things over to Dr. Shears. But at any time, if either of you want to jump in, just make a motion and I'll, uh, I'll stop talking. <laughs> so the first question, uh, it, it's been about a month uh, since our last Q&A event. So just generally, how is everything at SMH and how is the team holding up? Well, I'll, I'll try to answer that, even though Dr. Shears, you certainly can weigh in. Um, the, the team here, I think, is doing remarkably well, considering that we're working in a 1964 dated infrastructure that wasn't built to manage pandemic disease. COVID wasn't even invented back when this building was put together. So we've done, uh, the, the team here has shown remarkable resiliency. And uh, I think the last town hall we had, we had a, a number of people follow up with questions to my office saying that they would like a little bit more about what's happening locally. We know that uh, Canada's uh, creeping upon 100,000 positive cases. There's 8 million cases globally. But what's really happening in New Tecumseh and our surrounding catchment? And uh, for our staff, just at a staff level, I think people might be interested to know that uh, we've tested 26 of our own staff here for COVID. Uh, all coming back negative, and six of our physicians have been tested uh, coming back negative as well. There's about 60 cases here locally that have come through the Simcoe Muskoka Public District Health Unit. So COVID is here, it is having community spread. Uh, we are just north of the York region, which was kind of a bit of a hot spot, but has come out of uh, the, uh, you know, the, the community spread problems that they were facing in York region. Uh, we were lucky enough to be opened up here uh, for, you know, under the government's directive. So it's still here. It still worries me a great deal, but uh, staff are doing great and, and uh, we still have uh, cases presenting to our assessment center and to our eMERGE that are query COVID. Okay. It's been in the, uh, in the news a lot recently that hospitals are beginning to ramp up uh, surgeries and procedures. Is this happening at Stevenson as well? Yeah, we started this week on Monday. We had our first uh, round of uh, 
surgical procedures put back in our OR. Just for the community to know, we always had our ORs opened, whether uh, Dr. Shears was in the OR or whether, you know, babies don't come on schedules and uh, C-sections. And we did limited surgeries. We really respected the provincial directive to really close down our ORs unless it was urgent or emergent. Uh, I was pleased to say that our hospital here had an OR selection committee uh, that kind of went through the criteria that the government required to reopen slowly and safely our surgical. Uh, we have about 200 backlog cases that we need to get at, uh, people who are awaiting different elective procedures. And uh, so we started that on Monday and uh, pleased to say that we it's our phase one of our program and we will proceed with some caution but uh, we're anxious to get our surgeons back in the OR and get our OR and periop nurses going again and be able to provide that service to the community because uh, some of these things, even though they're elective, you can't wait too long clinically. You, you, gotta, you gotta get tested or you gotta have your procedure done so it doesn't become a bigger problem down the road. Right, absolutely. Um, and the question as well, is there still an opportunity for the public to be tested for COVID-19 at SMH? Yeah, we've been really proud of our assessment center work in the lower parking lot at Fletcher. Uh, I guess it was two Mondays ago, the government uh, loosened the criteria for testing and uh, we actually saw a triple increase in volume down there. So for the community coming, especially now with long-term care requiring visitors to have uh, some, some form of swab or test, we're continuing to see that volume down below. Now we're open Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. It, uh, it's working from three to seven. And it serves the community really well. We were able to get lots of folks through. We're seeing about 90 people through in that time frame. Mm. So we're we're seeing uh, volumes that they see at William Osler and other hospitals, but we're doing it on three days a week. Uh, you have to remember and bear with us, we, we have a dated infrastructure. So we're it's an outdoor swabbing process and you bear with our staff who are wearing lots of PPE and this Friday is gonna be quite hot. Mm -hmm. So uh, I commend and we should be, thanking our frontline healthcare workers, our physicians and nurses who are working our assessment center to provide uh, care to our community and help reassure people if they worry about whether or not they have COVID. Absolutely, great. Um, so we have a few questions uh, shifting gears towards the obstetrics. Um, this one's for you, Jody, as well. Uh, so as an expectant mother, what can one anticipate when they arrive at Stevenson to have their baby? And especially while we're still in the midst of this pandemic. Well, I, I certainly wouldn't feel too comfortable. With, Dr. Shears is probably in a better position to answer that question, but we, we've tried to keep business as, as much usual as we can. So if you're coming here, you can expect to be screened. We are screen, actively screening. It's uh, any visitors or potential people who come to our building for COVID. You're going to be asked to wear a mask. Um, we're asking everybody who comes into the building to wear a level one surgical mask. Um, and uh, if you're discharged out, we, we have, our auxiliaries made a number of masks, cloth masks that people can take home with them and want to thank our auxiliary and our community members who have provided those masks. But uh, in the middle of this pandemic, we're trying to keep things as, as normal as we can. And uh, thank God for our obstetricians, Dr. Shears and his team who have, uh, we've had to make some changes, but we've tried to uh, try to keep it as, uh, as best we can to protect the safety of expecting uh, expecting parents. Great, thank you. Um, the next question is around doula services. Uh, and during the pandemic, I guess the question is around when doulas may be welcome to join uh, pregnant couples at SMH. Once doulas return to practice, do you anticipate a certification or specific training requirement from doulas? Mm. Yeah, so doulas have always been a part of Stevenson and uh, it's really not uh, an organizational directive that stops doulas from coming. Doulas, maybe just for the community and Dr. Shears, I'll look to you to help me out there. They've been a, a practice that's been around for quite some time in Ontario. It's a non-clinical support. It's not, they're not regulated under the Health Professions Act, but they provide a critical service in supporting an expectant mom or the partner uh, through the pain and through the process of birthing. Uh, we've never stopped them from coming. It's usually usually uh, the family asks that the doula uh, be part of the process. They, they're kind of like a champion and a coach and they work alongside with our professional team. Um, they don't provide medication administration or any of the professional services that uh, they really are there to help, you know, after the baby comes and uh, some of the coaching and post breastfeeding and kind of that personal 
emotional support that's so critical when you bring a, a loved one into this world. So uh, we've never stopped them from coming. Now we, again, we've restricted our visitor policies to one. So you'd have to really think, do you want your doula coming or do you want your loved one or whoever your support system is? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's been the only restriction. I should note, Tanya, that we are, just this morning, the government is indicating to acute care hospitals to start to lift their visitation restrictions. And so we're gonna do that really carefully and methodically, again, um, for a number of reasons. Great, okay. Yes, the other reason I'm coming here, um, I agree with you. I think under the umbrella of the visitor restriction policy, new laws cannot come yet, but I also see things are opening up. So I don't think it's going to be long before they're going to be part of the team. Again. I think it's an emotional support. Um, it's something that's always been at Stephen, and as you said, we have a good relationship with them. So from our perspective, we haven't stopped it, but unfortunately, underneath the umbrella of uh, visitor restriction, they will not allow it, but I think that's going to change. Yeah. One of the things about our visitor policy, Tanya, that the community needs to understand is that, well, first of all, we're concerned about the safety of everybody, staff, patients, etc. So restricting people who are coming to our building is just, it's just a smart thing to do. And uh, whether you're a business or especially if you're in a healthcare facility, but the limitation of PPE, and you know, our foundation has been great at trying to help secure uh, PPE, uh, personal protective equipment, and, and we want to make sure that we have that for our frontline healthcare workers. And then visitors and other people coming to the building will require some of that. And so we, we really need to be cautious to make sure our supply line is there and that we can allow people to come safely to our building. And we're going to be there. Dr. Shears is correct. We're going to work, and you'll see that lifting over the next few weeks. Okay, great. Um, so we're going to shift gears to Dr. Shears. So at this time, I'm very pleased to formally welcome you to the panel. Dr. Shears has been practicing family medicine uh, and women's health in Barrie and Alliston and is chief of obstetrics and gynecology at Stevenson Memorial Hospital. He's been a well-known obstetrician at RVH for 11 years and brings over 25 years of experience to his practice. Dr. Shears was born and raised in South Africa and moved to Canada in 1995, where he established a very busy family practice in Manitoba. In 2002, he was awarded for the best resident research paper in obstetrics and gynecology from the University of Manitoba and was recognized nationally by the Canadian Foundation for Women's Health. Dr. Shear's research was published in the Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology of Canada and is still used today by Mother Risk as one of the references for fetal solvent syndrome. So thank you, Dr. Shears, for taking the time to join us today. We really appreciate it. Uh, any opening comments before we get into our questions, Dr. Shears? Yes, so um, thank you for that introduction. Um, we are a very small department at Stevenson, but I have to say we are a very successful department. People are happy with our department. It's close to home. It's always had a good name. And uh, we were able to recruit excellent physicians to be part of our department. And even though COVID-19 happened, it didn't change our outcomes. It did change how we do business. And I have to really commend the staff because we had to change location. We had to change to a different floor. We had to make some adjustments but they have been excellent and our outcomes and the patient's satisfaction rate is still good. So we have a small, but as Jody said, we have a mighty department and we have to, to work in our Great, wonderful. Um, so the first question is about who's allowed in the delivery room. Uh, is it still only one person, such as a partner or support person? So we sort of touched on this uh, earlier. And uh, But the, further to that question, can uh, their partners stay overnight at the hospital during this pandemic? So according to the visitor restriction policy, it's still only one support person, and you can choose who that is. It's not interchangeable, and I think people are aware of this. You can't go out and but the relay gets the next one in, so it's got to be one. But they can definitely stay overnight. Um, we have extra beds for them to be in the room. They're part of this delivery um, by the choice of the uh, patient who labors. And um, that has not changed, and I don't think it will change. Great. 
Um, does the mum need to wear a mask while in labour or delivering the baby? And does their partner need to also wear full PPE during delivery and after? I think it's hard to wear a mask even just wearing it without labour. So if you have to wear a mask while you labour, I think it's going to be extremely difficult. Yeah. If the mom is completely asymptomatic and she's been tested and she's negative, once she's in the room, she doesn't have to wear a mask, the partner doesn't have to wear a mask either. I think when you go out in the hallways, when you go out any um, outside of your labour and whatever you're doing, you got to maintain social distancing, clean your hands, wash your hands as frequently as possible, um, uh, wear the mask, and then when you come back, you could, you could you know, leave it at the door or leave it at the bedside, wash your hands again, and your room is yours, you don't have to wear a mask. Okay, great. Um, and can family or friends come and visit after the birth? So again, that's a no at this point. I know it's such a big family event. I've been at Stevenson where people were in the waiting room down the hallway. <laughs> after I haven't had actually long for those days again to come back, but they haven't been there for a little while. So it's a bit surreal to practice this way. But it's a pandemic. Uh, I mean, this pandemic is, uh, how often does it happen? Once every 10 years, once every 20 years. We, uh, that one was 2009, I believe, H1N1. Mm -hmm. So it's not a frequent event, hopefully, but we have to do everything in our power to keep people safe. And for that reason, visitors are not allowed. It's still the visitor restriction policy, unfortunately. Okay. Um, the next question is, where uh, does one enter the hospital when arriving uh, to avoid any contact with other patients? Do they still come through the main entrance? You still come through the main entrance. There will be a trailer there that's belongs uh, uh, by the LPG. There will be a is in effect uh, will change, but screening will be done. And if people are screened and they be positive or there's a suspicion, they will be admitted or to the hospital where they have infection protocols in place. And um, that's where they will be uh, isolated from the general public. So I think if somebody is positive and screening, yes, they will be isolated. But most people are negative, screening questions are negative. And once they enter the hospital, they will be directed by the staff to go to the second floor to labor and delivery. And what Stevenson has done, which was excellent, was to separate the labor and delivery from the main hospital. So they have a lung unit or respiratory unit on the bottom floor where the old labor and delivery used to be. So that now all has changed and people are not in contact with people if they would have been diagnosed positive with COVID. They will go to the second floor, they will be completely isolated from the excellent safety that in place, and they will not be in contact, even though everybody will be screened. Great. Um, and the next question is, are there any changes to what uh, a mom can bring into the hospital? Can they bring food and their usual sort of list of things? Is that all still allowed? Yeah. I think um, we always have to remember there's no substitute for common sense. You cannot bring a you know, travel light. So people have to come in and bring as little as possible. Everything that they need, if it's gown or pads or any sanitary pads, it will be provided by the hospital. People can certainly bring their own, but they got to be smart about it. They got to limit the amount. If they want to bring food in, uh, packaged food is better. Um, and uh, you know that can be started easily in the hospital, um, but they are allowed to bring food and they are allowed to bring their own clothing for the time being while they're in the hospital. Usually for a labor and delivery, it's, it's going to be one night, 24 hours. If it happens to be a cesarean section that was anticipated, it might be 48 or 72 hours, but almost never longer than that. Okay. Um, the next question is around potential emergencies. So if someone has a complication with their delivery um, or if they have to have a C-section, has COVID-19 impacted emergency care? 
So the way we manage emergencies have not changed, or, or the way we manage emergencies have changed as far as the PPE is concerned. But the acuity and the way we manage it in the hospital, we still use obstetrical protocols and guidelines. If somebody needs uh, somebody needs a cesarean section, if they need an operative delivery, and we have to go to the OR, so now we have to use the elevator, which we didn't have to use in the past, but the elevators recently have been upgraded, so we have a dedicated elevator for us, so there's no limitation in time to get to the OR. Um, as far as the emergency is concerned, we will still let ourselves be guided by the obstetrical acuity. We, if somebody is in the main OR and they have an epidural that's working well or they get a spinal, we elect not to use any cautery, so there's no airborne particles. And then we use uh, normal mask, normal gloves, normal gowns, and we will use eye protection. If somebody for some reason need a general anesthetic because they cannot tolerate uh, a spinal or we don't have time for a spinal, then they might be airborne particles. So that becomes a more uh, dangerous situation for COVID. And everybody then has to have an N95 mask, the surgical staff, the nurses, the scrub nurses, anesthesia, all of them. Unfortunately, with a general anesthetic, um, the father or the support person will not be allowed in the room. And that's always been the case, uh, but it's still uh, with COVID the same. If the spinal is working well, if the epidural is working well, then it's business as usual, the way we always scrub the, the support person as part of the whole delivery. And we still do skin to skin, the late core clamping. We try and do it as best as possible, but still business as usual. If somebody needs cautery, say for instance, somebody may have a risk or a tendency for a uh, bleeding disorder or something happened in the past that we know of, then when we use cautery, we also have to use uh, N95 masks and all the surgical staff as well as anesthesia, as well as the, um, the parent or uh, the support person. Okay. Um, so, Yes, the way we do business has changed, but um, it's only dressing up for COVID. But as far as the surgical technique is concerned, as far as managing the emergency, nothing has changed. And this is why we're still so comfortable in the OR for us, business as usual. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for the N95 mask, you have to talk really loudly because the nurses can't hear you. And they sometimes you ask for an instrument, then uh, you may get a different one or you ask for a wrong one. But in the end, um, it's business as usual. And we have been blessed with the excellence of the staff in the OR. And we still were able to maintain good outcomes, even though we have COVID. Great. Wonderful. Um, the last question we have is about leaving the hospital. So are there any precautions or steps that you would suggest to keep the little one and the family safe when they leave Stevenson? So first of all, don't give the baby a nap. <laughs> I think the mom, so when people go out, so public health uh, officials still advise us to wear a mask when we leave the hospital. Um, we do social distancing, so stay two meters away or six feet away from people. Um, be careful when you go out shopping. When moms are pregnant and when they go home after labor and delivery, they are somewhat immune compromised. So you're at risk for other infections out there. So social distancing is a good thing in this scenario. Um, so you would limit your family visits, um, potentially to people who live in the house or did live in the house with you. I think that's reasonable, but any extended family, people have become so competent and so eloquent with um, virtual, uh, virtual imaging and virtual interviews that I think the family could be part of it as best as possible. Like we are now. Wonderful. So that brings us to the end of our questions. We'll just have a few closing comments. We'll start Dr. Shears with yourself. If you have anything that you would like to add before we finish up today. So I agree with Jody. Our hospital is not 
Um, it's failing us a little bit, but it didn't deter us from doing good work. Um, it's, it's about the people, it's about the community. Um, we have been given opportunities by the hospital to continue our surgery. We are going to ramp up, ramp up gynecological surgery, so that's coming. Um, obstetrical surgery has never changed. Emergency surgeries have never changed. So people could still feel as safe as they did feel in the past at Stevenson. We have great managers, excellent nurses, and um, it is really a privilege to work at Stevenson Memorial Hospital. Great, thank you so much. Jody, any final words? Oh, I think we need to, we can't hear you, Jody. Sorry, I don't know if it's just on my end. Oh. Oh. No, my apologies, Tanya. Thank you so much for allowing me to. F it's awful hard to follow Dr. Shears, isn't it? He uh, He's such an eloquent speaker and the community needs to know you're in really good hands with his team. I, over the course of my tenure here, I've really watched the obstetrics team under his leadership come to a, a new level uh, and a new standard of care here at Stevenson. And the community needs to know you, you want to come here to have your baby. We. Patient satisfaction scores are some of the best in the province because of people like Dr. Shears. And uh, we've got a really great uh, obstetrical team. Our nurses, our midwives are fantastic. Um, and you wanna come here to have your baby. So uh, just to the community, uh, we try to keep things as, as normal as we can, but, um, and I, I certainly wanna give the community a new hospital and I wanna give Dr. Shears and, and, and all members of our medical advisory committee a chance to practice in a modern state building. We're not there yet, but you can also know that uh, I'm looking forward to more of town halls to give updates on our redevelopment because we haven't stopped pushing Capital Branch and the Ministry of Health through this pandemic. And I'm uh, confident that uh, I have a meeting tomorrow and I'm hoping for more town halls to bring the community up to speed with what we're doing. Oh, that's great. Uh, so thank you both uh, Dr. Shears and Jody for taking the time to be here today and participating in this virtual event. Um, thank you again to the community members who submitted their questions in advance. I would like to ask everyone who watches uh, the, sh the episode or the episode, <laughs> the uh, recording to take a moment and complete our survey um, afterwards. It really does uh, help us immensely to have the feedback and uh, and you know we certainly appreciate as we do f uh, future events hearing from you in ways that we can improve. So thank you so much. Um, as many of you know, because you've supported, you know, the foundation, uh, we have a pandemic fund that uh, we're still raising money um, to help support the hospital and their greatest needs. Um, and we are so excited to say that since launching um, the matching gift opportunity uh, in May from the Morning View Foundation, that we've raised ninety thousand dollars, and their matching gift was up to one hundred and fifty thousand. So we're we're grateful for those who have supported. And uh, there's you know never been a greater time to support the hospital and have your gift amplified. So if you uh, would like to make a gift or if you have any questions, please reach out and, uh, and we'll be happy to, to talk to you further about that. So thanks to you both and uh, thanks to our community.